password so that you may log on to Windows without typing a password at all, click Remove Password. If you want to change the account type from Standard to Administrator, click Change Type. The difference between Standard Permissions and Administrator Permissions is that administrators can make almost any change to the computer and its settings, whereas a Standard account has permissions fitting for your children or employees. If you're the computer's sole user, it is important that your account is Administrator. Video comes up often in modern computing. Often we are inclined at some point or another to watch a video or listen to a song we've downloaded. Well, in order to play videos on your computer, you need two things. The first is a media player, like Windows Media Player, which come loaded with Windows. And the second thing you need are called codecs. Codecs are programs that plug into the media player and permit the viewing of a particular kind of video file. You'll find many different types of video files while surfing the internet. The main video formats have extensions like AVI, MPG, WMV, MP4, and FLV. Codecs also tend to be completely free and are usually downloaded in packages. An excellent website for downloading free codecs is freecodecs.com. Here, the K-Lite codec can be downloaded. K-Lite is an excellent codec package and is updated regularly. Adobe Flash Player, available at adobe.com, is a plugin often required to view streaming video on the internet. Next, we'll learn how to burn DVDs. To burn a DVD is to record something onto the DVD. Most computers these days come loaded with DVD rewritable drives. There are many ways and many programs which create DVDs. The easiest way is to insert a blank DVD into the DVD drive. Then, go to My Computer and attempt to open the DVD drive. Usually, a window appears asking for the title you want to give to the DVD. Give the DVD a name of reasonable length. Then click Show Formatting Option and select Mastered File System or Live File System. I recommend Mastered File System. After all of this, you're given a blank window, and it is to this blank window where you paste all of the files you intend to record onto DVD. Recording information onto a blank CD is done exactly the same. The DVD has a storage capacity of 4.3 gigabytes, while the CD has a capacity of only 700 megabytes. Retrieving the total file size of many files is easy. Simply select all of the files, right-click on one of those files, and then click Properties. A window appears telling me that I have selected 8 files, and that the total file size is 5.3 gigabytes. Since I'm trying to burn a DVD, and since DVDs only have a capacity of 4.3 gigabytes, it's obvious that I'll be forced to remove some of the files so that their total size of all of the files is less than 4.3 gigabytes. So, I begin selecting and removing files until all of the files can fit onto a single DVD. Once that's done, click Burn to Disk or Close Session. Burn speeds of 4x to 8x produce high quality DVDs, whereas burning a DVD at 16x will certainly be faster, but will produce a slightly less reliable recording. It is also worth noting that cleaning CDs and DVDs before putting them into the drive increases the drive's speed, reliability, and lifespan. So, whether you're reading the disc or writing to a disc, remember to clean the bottoms first. This is especially true with blank discs you're about to record to. Before inserting the blank disc into the DVD drive, minimize the number of smudges and fibers from the bottom of the disc. Even though you may use My Computer to burn DVDs, there are programs out there that make burning DVDs easier. One of those programs that makes disc burning easier and is also completely free is called ImageBurn. 
Image Burn has a number of options, but the one that concerns us is Write Files and Folders. Ensure that the destination is set to the DVD drive with the empty DVD in it. My DVD burner, for instance, is the G drive. On the bottom of the image burn window, you'll see the drive's status. If you have an empty DVD in the disk drive, it will say ready. Otherwise, it may say that the DVD drive has no disk at all, or perhaps a disk that has already been written to. Clicking on Show Disk Layout Editor, a large window appears. This window, called the Disk Layout Editor, is what we will use to add files to the empty DVD. As with many other programs, ImageBurn supports drag and drop, so finding and adding files to the DVD becomes a cinch. After clicking on Computer, the interface becomes very familiar. Now, it's a simple matter of locating the files on my hard drive, the ones that I wish to burn to DVD. Once found, they can be copied and pasted, or simply drag and drop onto the empty window below. This window represents the files that are soon to be on the DVD. On the bottom right of the screen, you'll see an option to change what kind of disk you're burning. If you're burning a CD, change this to 700 megabyte. DVD. If you're burning a DVD, change this setting to DVD-5. On the bottom of the window, you'll discover a blue bar making its way from left to right. This blue bar indicates how much of the disk will be filled by the files you've selected. After you've selected too many files, this bar will turn red. At this point, some files must be removed in order to continue. Once the selected files fit within the confines of DVD capacity, which is 4.3 GB, you are ready to create the disk. Close out the editor window and open up the device tab. An ideal setting for speed is 8x, and in the options tab, you'll find a file system setting. An ideal selection is ISO 9660 plus UDF. Under the labels tab, one may assign a name to the disk. By clicking on an unlabeled icon below, the disk burning process is started. BitTurrent has quickly become the internet standard in regards to downloading movies, music, TV shows, and software. This revolutionary system allows regular computer users to share files and folders with each other without the need for a website. The first thing you need to begin downloading from BitTorrent is what is called a BitTorrent client. There are many BitTorrent client programs out there, and almost all of them are completely free. But the one I recommend is U-Turn. Now that we have downloaded a client program, we can now go find things to download. In order to search for files to download, we need to go to BitTorrent search engine sites. Simply typing in BitTorrent search into Google brings up a ton of sites which claim to be BitTorrent search sites. My favorite is the piratebay.org. The search interface is pretty straightforward. Here, I type in what I'm looking for, then I specify what kind of search results I'm looking for. If I'm looking for music, I select music. If I'm looking for movies or TV shows, I search for video. If I'm looking for video games and other software, I select application or video game. Let's say I'm looking for videos. After finding the video and clicking on it, I'm brought to a screen with various information regarding this particular download. The first thing to take notice of is the size of the download, which is stated in the notation system discussed earlier. In this case, the download is 699 megabytes, or 699 million bytes in size. The second thing to take note of is the number of seeds and leeches, sometimes called seeds and peers. These two numbers comprise the